noticed that how someone can be so evil. Not this monster that everybody has uh, created. What if you thought you'd finally found the love of your life? But then you found out that your whole relationship was nothing but a big lie. That's exactly how the women who dated Simon Leviev felt when Simon managed to scam millions of dollars out of them. But who is Simon Leviev and how did he manage to use the online dating platform Tinder to scam multiple women after making them believe that he was their one true love? And where is he now? The story of Simon Leviev and his countless scams started making rounds on the internet in early Early 2022, with the release of the Netflix documentary The Tinder Swindler, that told the account of three women, all of whom had met Simon on Tinder and had instantly been charmed by the man. Looking at Simon's dating profile, you'd never be able to tell that everything he shared about his life was essentially a lie to everyone on Tinder. He was just a good looking guy with tons of money looking for love. One of the first people to fall for Simon's complicated Ponzi scheme was a woman named Cecilia Schroeder Fielhoy. Right off the bat, the con artist had managed to make a lasting impression on the woman, flying her out to what he claimed was his private jet for their first ever date. This, as we later find out, was a pattern with Simon. His first dates were grand. He flew women out across the world to come and see him, took them out to the best restaurants in the world, and made them believe that this was the start of their very own fairy tale where Prince Charming was hopelessly in love with the girl. Simon claimed that he was the son of a billionaire diamond dealer, even going as far as to change his name from Simon Hyatt to Simon Leviev, and photoshopping himself in pictures of the diamond mogul Leviev family to look the part. But you know how they say love makes people do crazy things? That's exactly how Simon used these women to carry out his scams. Cecile had gone on record to talk about how Simon made her feel so important with every phone call he made and every flower bouquet he sent to her. And honestly, can you blame her? Everyone enjoys feeling special, right? And Simon used that to make sure that Cecile would go to any length to reciprocate his love for her, even asking her to move in with him after a few months of dating. So it's safe to say that Simon very carefully made Cecile feel like she was being swept off her feet until one day when it all came crashing down. It started off with a text, but instead of one of Simon's usual texts, he told Cecile that he was badly hurt and that people were after him. He sent Cecile a number of pictures of his bodyguard bloody and injured, saying that for security reasons, he couldn't access any of his bank accounts anymore and that he needed Cecile to help him out financially for a little while. And because Cecile had seen the kind of life that Simon lived, she had no doubts about him paying her back until that was when she realized all of it was a big lie. What's really fascinating is how Simon surrounded himself with fake actors that pretended to be bodyguards, friends, all helping him carry out his elaborate cons. But things don't just stop there. Simon repeated the same pattern with a second woman named Pernilla Shoyholm, who didn't get into a relationship with Simon, but thought of him as a very close friend. Just like Cecile, Pernilla met Simon on Tinder as well, and he immediately started buying her flight tickets, taking her to lavish dinners, and even paying for her to go on a grand vacation with him. But what Pernilla didn't know was that all the money that Simon had been spending on her and their luxury vacation was all coming from Cecile, who thought that the love of her life was in some serious trouble. They needed her help. Cecile claims Simon defrauded her out of $200,000, making her bankrupt, despondent, and fearful for her security, turning extremely aggressive whenever she would refuse to lend him money, in addition to the complete heartbreak, of course. But after Simon and Pernilla's wild vacation, Simon once again began to receive threats from his enemies, leaving him unable to access his money. And that's where Pernilla came in to lend him money, repeating the cycle all over again. The third and hopefully the last woman that this con artist tried to scam was Eileen Charlotte. But by the time Simon had got to her, Cecile and Pernilla had started to realize that they had been scammed by Simon. At this point, the two women had been collaborating with a group of journalists who had launched an investigation to find out exactly who Simon was and how many women had he conned. And by the way, it turns out that Simon Leviev was never even related to the Leviev family after all. In fact, he belonged to a rather middle class 
class family in Israel. But what's surprising is that the man had been committing fraud ever since he was a teenager. Sometime in 2011, Simon Hyatt was charged with theft, forgery, and fraud in Israel for trying to cash in stolen checks after he had stolen a checkbook from a family that had made the mistake of hiring him as a babysitter and another one who had hired him as their handyman. He'd been convicted of defrauding three women in Finland in 2015 and sentenced to two years. And when he got out, he apparently went back to his old ways. With all of these charges against him, Simon had consistently failed to show up in court and had chosen to flee to Europe instead, where he took on the surname Lviv to pretend as if he belonged to the Israeli diamond moguls. Like something out of a movie, Simon was a master of changing his identity and scamming multiple women under the guise of being in love with them. He would spend months winning their trust and then the plan would start like clockwork. As far as Cecile and Pernilla are concerned, Simon used fake documents to tell them that he had started paying them back. But when the women checked their bank accounts, they were still empty. So, by the time he had gotten to Eileen, an investigation against him was already set in motion. When journalists managed to track Eileen down and inform her of Simon's frauds, they found out that the man had yet to start scamming Eileen out of her money, making it the perfect chance to trap him. When Eileen found out about Simon's scams through an article published by the journalist with screen shots, bank receipts, and all kinds of evidence that showed how he managed to scam countless women, she decided to turn the tables on him and swindle the tinder swindler himself. So when Simon came to the woman with his story about his enemies, she knew exactly what to do. With Simon already being in a vulnerable position after the article had been published and he had been accused of being a con artist, he had no one but Eileen to turn to. So Eileen decided to make him believe that she was on his side, reassuring him that she didn't believe a word that those other women were saying. This is when Lviv started asking Eileen for money, telling her to sell her car and even her house to help him out of this sticky situation. But Eileen took advantage of his position and told him that, being a stylist, she could sell some of his expensive designer clothes to help him make money. So Eileen showed up in Prague to meet him and collect his clothes. He gave her yet another fake credit card to put all the money on. Eileen, however, sent the fake credit card straight to the police police to try and get Simon arrested for his fraud. Eileen then started to list Simon's clothes on eBay and pulled in thousands of dollars selling them. Meanwhile, Simon got more and more agitated, asking her to transfer the money as soon as possible. When Simon realized that none of the money that Eileen had been making selling his stuff was reaching him, he sent her threatening emails and texts, which the woman turned into the police as well. Eileen told the investigators that he would leave her 20 minute long voicemails where he would threaten her and her family while also claiming to love her in the next sentence, showing just how deranged the man truly was. In the middle of all this, Eileen found out that Simon was flying from Prague to Athens. At this point, the police had been trying to track the man down, but he had been laying low to avoid getting arrested. Eileen immediately reported Simon's whereabouts to Interpol, who then apprehended the man upon his landing. They found out that he'd been using a fake passport with the name of David Sher. Eileen ended up losing about $140,000, but she did manage to get some of this back by selling Simon's designer items. But that's not it, because the three women weren't the only women conned by Simon. There are plenty of other women who fell prey to this man's charms. Simon's Ponzi scheme affected women in Norway, Finland, and Sweden, among other countries, and he used the same story, hiring fake bouncers, business associates, and other staff members to fool countless women into giving him money, which he would then use to trap others. So, where is the Tinder swindler now? After all this went down, Simon was convicted of 15 months imprisonment for deception and forced into paying $43,289 in restitution to his survivors in December of 2019, although he only served five months. Simon was also banned from Tinder and other similar dating platforms once his story went public. But the funny thing is that even after after all that, Simon continues to claim that all of this is a big conspiracy against him. He describes himself as a gentleman who is only using Tinder to meet some single ladies and that his Bitcoin trading is where he gets the money to fuel his fancy lifestyle. According to the swindler, all the allegations against him are based on lies. All these monsters that everybody has uh, created. However, Simon 
Ryan did say that he, in fact, wasn't the son of the Diamond Mogul, and proceeded to say that he never really claimed that that was true to any of his Tinder matches. And if that wasn't enough, Simon even has a girlfriend now! Yeah. That's right. The Tinder swindler is currently dating an Israeli model, Kate Conlon, who has gone on the record to show her support for Simon, even appearing in interviews alongside her now official boyfriend. The model fully believes that the entire story about the Tinder swindler was completely fake, and that Simon had never even borrowed a single penny from anyone. Ever since the couple went public, Kate and Simon have been regularly spotted traveling the world together, and the two generally seem to be super happy with each other. As far as the other women in the story go, none of them have been paid back by Simon, and are still struggling to recover from the financial loss that the Tinder swindler is responsible for. But this is not the end of their story. After all this messy drama, can you guess who really got lucky in the end? Given the popularity of Netflix's Tinder swindler, the series lead, suspected fraudster Simon is demanding well over $20,000 for nightclub performances. That's right. Lviv has even hired a professional publicist and is focusing on a dating show in which women compete for him. Lviv has also signed up with the e-greeting service Cameo, where he charges anywhere from $200 to $1,000. But if there's one bright side to the story, it's that the real Lviv family has sued the alleged swindler for impersonating their family member and getting the family indebted, and rightfully so. So, Plug Gang, what are your thoughts on the situation? Do you think that the Tinder swindler will ever be held accountable for his actions? And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out the next one.